Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week I have got several projects that I wanna share with you. These are all pretty quick projects. What I'm hoping will be pretty quick though, I've gotta make some custom spacer type washers for a friend of mine. You'll see, I've gotta grind machine them on the, sh on the shaper, get them to general shape and size, and then grind them to thickness on the Brown and Sharp MicroMaster. I've also got a drive shaft that I gotta shorten for a guy that has already tried to shorten this drive shaft. And it's one of those, hey buddy, can you fix what I tried to fix and make it work kind of jobs? You'll see. I've also got a quick little welding job that I gotta do for my dad. A little project on my own that I wanna do on the Shaper. You'll see a lot of little things going on. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and hope you enjoy. So the project that we are gonna start off with is some spacers. We need eight of these. Now, yeah, you can almost go and buy this maybe other than its custom thickness. So it's a washer for all intents and purposes that is 1.5 inch in diameter or 38 millimeters. It needs a drilled hole that is 21 30 seconds in the middle. It needs to be finished ground on each side to a thickness of 200 thousandths or about five millimeters, I think, within a couple thou. They really just need to be right around 200 thousandths and nice parallel on each side. I'm not exactly for sure what they're being used for, but there needs to be eight of them. Now, it would really help if I had some one and a half inch diameter shafting, but I do not. Uh, but I do have some inch and three quarter 1144, which turns really well, so we can blast off that quarter inch super quick. Uh, spot, drill, turn, or spot, drill, and then start, you know, parting these off, then we'll put them on the uh, brown and sharpen. Grind them to size. So I need to delete this four jaw so quick and uh, put on my three jaw chuck. So I also want to explain, let me grab a hammer, to my real loyal viewers who watch me all the time. They look for me, they look for me every Saturday morning. And I just want to say that my life has been, let's just call it complicated lately. On a positive note, I am going to be a grandfather. I found that out. So last six months for me have been, yeah, complicated. So just know that you know nothing's really changed except for my schedule has gotten really busy with school starting, with home repairs that I had to take care of, that I still have to finish up on, that I got to do before winter, and all sorts of things family-wise that I have put off for far too long. And I've just been trying to spend a little more time with my family and get caught up on some of the projects that I've put off in order to come out here and, and do what I love. You know, work in the shop, machine, you know, film for you guys. So just know that everything will hopefully get back to normal, but you know, it just is what it is right now. And I am trying my best. Oh goodness, that's heavy. You gotta use your back when you lift these. Nothing but the back. I can get a rag. So these L-type spindle noses, long tapered spindle noses, very common. You know, back in the earlier days, I'm not a huge fan of them simply because it, they're a lot harder to get backing plates for. If you so, if you're in the market for a lathe. You know, and if you want a lot of chucks and stuff, unless you get them with the machine, my recommendations are to steer clear of the L-nose spindled lathes. Just my opinion, but you know, they can be tough to, to get to backing plates and stuff, and they're expensive when you do find them. So one of the downfalls to these older machines where they commonly had a pretty small spindle bore. As big as this machine is, it only has a through bore through the spindle of an inch and a half, which is pretty small. This is an inch and three quarter. It will not fit through the spindle. And in order for me not to have a crazy amount of stick out, I'm gonna have to take this to the saw, cut me off a chunk. I think about four inches should give us a good amount to bite on and enough for our waste for our parting blade and 
the thickness of our finished washers. So let's go over to the saw super quick, blast off a four inch chunk of this 1144. So I was told that the OD of this is not super critical. So we're just gonna use the, the digital calipers there just to get this down to 1.5 inch. And I like to spin my part in the chuck a little bit. It seems to seed it in the jaws a little better. And then go, if you want it to be as concentric as possible, go around if you have a multiple, uh, multiple keyed Chuck, go around and tighten them all, and that kind of centers the scroll. So the first thing we're gonna do is face this part. We'll turn it down to our 1.5 inch. We will spot drill it, and then we will drill it to 21, 30 seconds, I think. I'll have to look at the sketch there. And then we will come in, swap our tool, part off our chunks, and take that to the grinder. <laughs> So to get down to the inch and a half, obviously being an inch and three quarter, we have 250 thousandths to remove or 125 thousandths in feed. This is 375 RPM. Just gonna face this off super quick. Come in, just come in, touch off, and we'll zero our dial. And we'll stop right before we get to size, check with our mics, and then do a finish cut. Zero. Because we know we've got a little bit of run out, we'll start off with a 50 thousandths depth of cut. Eleven forty four turns a lot like cast iron and chips. Check it to make sure it's not super hot. So we've got to pull off 28 thousandths.
So 1.502. Uh, this is a 2,000 soft. Goodness. Yeah, it's good enough. I was told not to worry about the finish or, you know, about the OD because it wasn't critical. So I'm trying to blast through this because any more time than I spend that's necessary is just wasted time on my part. So we're going to spot it. We will pilot drill it, and then we'll come back with our 21, 30 seconds, I think. I guess the trick of drilling a deep hole is just, or a relatively deep hole, is patience. Don't get greedy. Sometimes I do get too greedy when I break a drill off. You know, back them out, clean the drill off, and save you a lot of grief. Obviously the bigger the drill, the slower you want to run. We could probably run at this speed, but uh, I'm not in that big a hurry. I'm going to go 200 RPM. Yeah, it looks good. Once you get so dr deep with a drill that the flutes are no longer exposed, that's as far as you can go, really, because then the chips just have no way out of the drill, and you are in trouble if you push them hard after the flutes are you know, so deep in there that the chips can't get out. They'll jam up super quick. is the bottom. We'll get her 
tailstock out of the way and change out to our parting tool. And because I don't have a DRO on here, what I like to use is this two inch travel uh, dial indicator. So we'll just come in, touch off with the side of our blade. I know the thickness, it's 120 thousandths thickness of this blade. So I'll come in, touch off, call that zero, come in 120 thousandths, re-zero, and then, you know, step. I'll leave a little meat on the bone of each one of these that I part off for grinding, obviously. sure that this is square with the chuck before I do anything. I'm not 100% sure. Glad I checked it. thousandths which is the thickness of our parting blade and then the thickness of the washer There was a big owl out here just hooting like crazy until I opened the door and turned the camera on. Let's see if we can hear him.
There's a couple talking to each other, one on this side of the creek and one on the other. So anytime you make washers, usually you're left with flash around the hole. And the easiest way that I have found to get rid of that, it's like a nice smooth jaw vise, like a machine vise. And just kind of, just barely give it enough room for it to slide through, but it'll should, as you drive it through, it should split that, a lot of that flashing off, see? Very nice. Some of it is so thin they just break off by hand, but some of them are a little thicker. I don't want to cut my fingers. throw all those on the floor. Hello girl. So let me grab a drill and a deburring tool. I'll just do these by hand super quick. So I've been using my axial and my radial axial and radial relief grinder quite a bit. I've sharpened every single one of my single flute countersinks. It's an awesome machine. Now we'll give these a quick trip across a stone, and then over to the grinder they go. So in the vise of the shaper here, just throw that on the ground. So in the vise of the shaper here, I have my track anvil. And I left this thing outside, and I just want to clean it up a bit. I'm going to clean up the top, just going to dust it off, get this rust off of it. And I am going to clean up the other surfaces as well, but all I'm going to show is me cleaning up the top, because I don't have time to show everything right now. But we will show for the shaper guys out there. Let's clean up this top. So I touched off, what we've got is a piece of M2 here, large radius on the end. I'm just going slow, 20 thousandths step over, just going to clean this top up. I don't want to remove a lot of material from it. I'll probably make two passes. Everybody always likes to see the inner workings of the shaper. Big bull gear on a pivot. Pretty simple the way that this thing works. But it moves faster. I forget who came up with the stroke design, but it moves faster in the reverse than it does in the forward uh, stroke. And that is just to speed up efficiency, or just for efficiency, I guess.
and there we go. That, that's actually good enough. I think I'm just gonna leave it like that. So that's not a bad finish. I mean, it's plenty good enough for what I use it for. But uh, if we wanted it better, I've got another one that uh, surface ground. You know, if you're banging around on metal, then you don't want to put marks in it. You know, that's, that's what I use it for. One thing that I don't like about this grinder is this, this chuck, this mag chuck. It's fine, but it's got a lot of residual magnetism to it. Which makes it hard to get your parts on and off. That's all it is, or off. Getting them on, it's easy. So really this grinder needs to warm up for a few minutes before it, it's, it, if it sets it gets air in it but it'll straighten up So I know which one of these is the thickest one because I just quickly went over and measured them so I'm touching off on it. So it should be safe to run across this whole set. So all I want to do on my first pass is just get the tops of them nice and flat. Then I'll flip, then I'll flip them. So just a side note, I've been loving this little sprayer. It seems to work really good. A little bit more. Got to clean up this side. So there's that side cleaned up. Now I'm going to take these off the chuck and then, uh, clean the chuck off and flip them. What is it, girl? Get them! Get them! It's absolutely nothing, I'm sure. Oh, now she wants back in. Okay. Thank you for your help, little girl. Come on. Yeah, you're good. You're real good. Yes.
So now that I've got cleaned up on one side, flipped, and I've got them basically cleaned up on the other side, I've got a depth mic, and I'm just going to come off the edge of this, this one here. And I'm going to measure to the face of the chuck. We are 203.75 thousandths. So three and three quarter thousandths will get us down to where we need to be. One thing about when there's a lot of residual magnetism, you almost gotta drag your part off the chuck, which, well, you can maybe wedge them off, but, and then that puts scratches on, on your parts. And if you're trying to give somebody something that looks nice, you don't want scratches on it. All right, so I've been using the daylights out of these, the digital Mitutoyo mics. They are amazing. Zero. Let's see what we got here. I mean, it's hard to beat that. So on the money, 200 thousandths. I may have said 210 over there, but we're shooting for, for 200. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That grinder makes it easy to hit numbers like that. As long as you're careful and you're measuring, that thing is, it's on. So on the floor here, I have a drive shaft that I need to shorten, and you guys have seen me, you've seen me do this before. In fact, it wasn't too long ago we did one uh, for uh, Johnny Cash, my wife's uh, crew cab dually, and it worked out amazing. You can drive that thing down the road 65 miles an hour and you can't feel a thing. It really worked out great. This one is gonna be a little different story. This buddy of mine who's building a hot rod, this drive shaft was already shortened uh, by him, and it didn't shorten it enough. It needs one inch pulled out of it. And unfortunately, uh, because of the way that it was welded back, I just, I'm not gonna be able to cut it off and do it like I normally do. Cut it, pop the end out, you know, cut the whatever I need to cut out and then push it back together and weld it. Because of that weld, I just, I'm, I'd never be able to get that thing straight again. So, oh, got a creepy spider on it as well. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is butt weld this thing. Not the best idea. I could cut it from that end because it hasn't been messed with, but I know I don't like to shorten them from the transmission side. I like to shorten them from the back side. That way if they do break, you know, they're more likely just to fall down and, you know, bang around a bit instead of jamming into the concrete and tearing the rear end out from under a vehicle. Whatever. You get the idea. This drive shaft's purpose is to move a hot rod around a parking lot while it's being built. He specifically said that he will build a brand new drive shaft when everything's done. He just wants this so he can move his vehicle around. So in order to get him back on the road, not on the road, back moving around the parking lot where he can build this hot rod, I'm going to cut an inch out of this shaft, clean up the ends, stick it back together as best as I can, and just put a weld around it. Before I do, cut it all the way in two, I always forget to do this, and I'm gonna mark it.
So I'm going to be TIG welding this together because I'm out of MIG gas. And I've probably just got enough TIG gas, argon, to, to do this job. Oh yeah, I'll just throw that on the floor. I'm loving these brass vice jaws. I think that that will work. I, I know it will work for what it's for its needs. So, there we go. A shortened drive shaft. That is probably not the straightest that it could be, but it's straight enough. So ever since the beginning of time, at least the beginning of my time anyway, my dad has been the guy who has the metal chairs that we use at all of our, our family gatherings and stuff. If we do a cookout, if we do Christmas, or if we do whatever, 4th of July, my dad's got the chairs. And the reason why he has the chairs is because his whole adult life, I've seen him collect these metal chairs and repair them because they, they always break. And uh, because of him and these chairs, we always got a place to sit at our, uh, at our gatherings. And when your dad asks you to repair one, you just do. My dad stopped welding uh, several years ago. He just cannot see anymore to do so. And he's asked me to repair this chair. I couldn't tell you. Probably 10 I've repaired in the last five years for, uh, for my dad. And this will probably be number 11, I'm guessing. So that is the job that I've been asked to do. Chances are you know somebody who's got the chairs that you borrow. You get you know, some event planned. So I gotta fix this for my dad. So on this chair, super simple break. I mean, they always break where they're just uh, spot welded there. My dad even signs his chairs, or not signs them, but puts his initials on them so he can tell his chairs apart from everybody else's. I remember watching my dad stick weld on these things. He's always kept his chairs in uh, good usable condition. So he likes to be able to tell his apart. So all, you know the deal. All we're gonna do is TIG weld this, boom, boom, put a couple spots on it. And uh, you know, it'll be good for another decade.
That is probably more than good enough. That's far harder than it was welded originally, and I don't want to get this so hot that I, you know, burn all the what's left of the coating off of it. If it breaks, it's my dad's. I'll fix it again. All right, guys, that's it this week. So several little little jobs this week. Made some precision spacers for a good friend of mine. I have been more than happy with the way that this Brown & Sharp MicroMaster surface grinder has been working out. Every time I've tried to hit my numbers, I have. I haven't had to hold my mouth a certain way. You know, I haven't had to just get lucky. It, You dial in a tenth, it takes off a tenth. And I, I love it when a machine just does what it's supposed to do. So made this precision spacers. We shortened a drive shaft for a good friend of my brother's named John, which is a, the guy's a super talented body man and gave me a lot of advice when I was working on my brown truck. So I am very glad to return his favor by shortening a drive shaft for him. We quickly resurfaced my track anvil and I repaired a chair for my dad, which is simple, but I'm hoping that I'll be repairing chairs for him for a very long time. So that is it for this week anyway. Thank you for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anyone who's helped me out whatsoever, I am very appreciative. So that is it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.